All right, all right, all right. This is the Voices of New Yorkers podcast. I'm your boy Malik. What's going on, people? I have Tamara here. Tamara, say what's up. Hi, everybody. How are you today? All right, so today's topic today is going to be keys to success. And I have my boy right here, Steven Barrington on the line, and also his young king, young Malik, also as well. Um, mm -hmm. Steven, we want to ask you questions, but I don't want to jump right into it because I want the viewers to kind of get a feel of who you are. I believe the best source of that is a primary source. So if you don't mind, I'm going to give the mic to you and you can give the viewers a little bit about yourself. Uh, no, no problem. Not at all. Um, well, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Stephen Barrington. I'm an actor. I was born in New York City. Um, I was raised in the country of Jamaica, and then I grew up in Durham, North Carolina, uh, where I was able to meet uh, Mr. Tamara Crawford right there. Uh, who's, who's been a very good friend of mine for over 20 years now, I, I think. Um, yeah, well, over 20 years. Um, uh, I, I started acting at Hillside High School, actually, uh, where I did meet Tamara. And um, that's where I kind of got the bug for it. And uh, it's led me here to Los Angeles. Now, uh, the journey's been wild. <laughs> it's been a wild journey, but uh, very grateful to be here, man. And, um, very ready to share my story or whatever, you know, might motivate the people to, to get on their grind or, you know, to pursue their passions, their dreams, whatever's, whatever they desire in their heart, man. All right, all right, 20 years, that's a long time to know Tamara, man. You ain't need no therapy for that? Oh, man, let me tell you something. I, I'm gonna tell you a true story because I, I was gonna tell it anyway. So let's tell it now. Man, I remember one time we was in high school and Tamara, Tamara loved me, y'all. I was like her little brother, man. She used to force me to go everywhere with her. She would literally grab the little hook in my book bag and make me walk with her to the store every morning. And i never forget one night, I don't even know how I got to her house, but I was at her house and she would not let me leave. She was like, nah, you gotta stay tonight. And I was like, no, 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 I gotta go home my parents. Tamara called my parents and was like, hey, Steve's staying here tonight and hung up on them. <laughs> it held me hostage all night. And when I got home the next morning, my stepfather was like, uh, Steve, don't don't have your women call in here. And I'm like, I, I was like 14. I ain't got no women. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it was so funny, though. Hilarious. Oh, That's crazy. Tomorrow you did that? Yep, yep, yep. Steve was like my brother. Everywhere I went, I was like, come on, Steve, we gotta go, we gotta go. And Steve <laughs> loved all my friends. Any friend that was at my house, Steve loved it. <laughs> Listen, can you can you repeat that again? Steve was like your brother because your father be listening to this podcast too. Wow, it's crazy! He's gonna knock on your door. Go ahead, repeat that. <laughs> um, all right, that's that's what's up. That's what's up, definitely. Um, so without further ado, we're going. If you don't mind, we're going to start asking you a couple of questions just to get a feel. Of just like you mentioned your journey. Um, Tamara, I'm gonna let you get yeah. that off since you know you was grabbing him by the hook of his bag. Right. So, Steve, tell me, you know, what would you say the keys to success are? Um, the keys to success are two things for, for that I've learned over, over time. And one of the biggest keys to success is consistency. Like a lot of people try something one or two times and then they like give up. But you really got to be consistent um at your craft or at your dream whatever it is you want to do um because that is actually gonna that's what's gonna make you better you know um and then uh patience i see a lot of people want to rush the process they want to they want to get to the to the end result without doing the work or you know like the work is so important because it molds you like i've been i've been um in hearty pursuit of my career for almost 12 years now and just in my journey, like nobody can come and like snatch what I got. And when I say that, if I lost everything now on the journey, I get it back in three years and not 12, just because I had that 12 years of experience. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of people who get opportunities now. Um, and I'm using film as an example, cause I'm an actor and it might be their first opportunity and where you wonder like, oh, what happened to them? Like, man, they had that one project we never really saw them yet. They didn't know how to sustain that opportunity or they didn't know how to continue the journey because they, they never really got fully into the work. 
you know? Um, so yeah, consistency and patience, um, two important things uh, and work. Oh, you got to work. <laughs> that, that's a very important part of it, work, man. Um, you know, wake up every morning, put your two feet down with a purpose. You know, why? know why you're doing what you're doing, most definitely. All right. Do you think that there's a time frame to success? Like I know you said you were working for 12 years. So do you think mm. someone that's been working for four years said, hey, I, I'm not where I want to be. What would you tell those people? Um, it took Denzel 20 years to get to, to, to where he was, to where people knew who he was, 20 years. Like, and, and again, I was speaking from the acting world, but it can be applied to anything really. But like, how long are you willing to work for what you say you want? You know, um, 20 years is really nothing. Like knowing you for 24 years has kind of gone by quick, Tamara. You right. know what I mean? Like 20 years really isn't anything if you're really enjoying what you do. And I think that's an important part of it. Like, you know, some people pursue things because of uh, a, a facade or they like how things look. Again, they want that end result, but like, you gotta be willing to like go through some very tough times, um, some very selfless times where you gotta put your own ego aside and really, in order to get to where you, where you wanna go. And that's the bottom line. There's no real time frame on it. You know, you you decide the time frame. And like for me instantly, for instance, my time frame, I put a time frame on success for myself and that was death. Like the only thing that can stop me from continuing my, my journey and my goals is, is death. So, you know, it doesn't matter if it takes 10 years. It's okay, let's get started. If it takes five years, it's okay, let's get started. You know what I mean? If it's gonna take 20, it's all right. Today's day one, let's get started. You know what I mean? Like, and that's, 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 Important. So ultimately, all right. You mentioned uh, uh, two things: consistency and patience, and stuff like that. And that's that. Those are easy words for people to throw out. Um, but in any in any industry, I could imagine, you know, the ups and downs that you you know you come across, especially initially getting into the industry. You know, um, trying to network, find the right people. You know, find the right area, particularly. I guess you know. You said you was from New York, and now you in the um, LA area. Um, mm -hmm. What what, what was your drive? What what kept you motivated? Even during the time frames when you, you know, things didn't work out for you, what kept you motivated to continue and push? Well, that's the thing. Things always worked out. And that's where you gotta, that's where your mind gotta be at. Like, if, if you're getting better every year, why would you stop? You know, a lot of people, again, it's that that um, that patience. You got to have that patience and that mind state of knowing like you're moving forward. Like, and that's why I say you got to wake up every day and put those two feet down with a purpose. Because if you're not, then it's going to make sense why you're not where you at. Because you know what I'm saying? You hanging out, you chilling, you're not, you're not doing the work necessary to get where you, where you want to be. You know what I mean? But when you're actually doing the work, you, you're not going to be you're not gonna get caught up in necessarily where you are because you're gonna know that you're constantly, you're moving on this journey. You know what I mean? So, and, and let me let me say this, because I'm saying it very confidently now. And I mean, this is, this is again, 12 years of, of, of just relentless grind, but I applied just my work ethic as a child into this. You know, um, I, 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 I'll break it down for y'all. 10 years ago, not 10 years ago, uh, almost 12 years ago, I almost committed suicide. True story. True. Almost took my own life because of depression. Um, I was depressed for 22 years and wasn't aware of it. Um, I had become a product of my environment. I was doing a lot of legal things, uh, things that <laughs> my mom wouldn't be proud of, you know what I'm saying? And at the same time, like, I also knew that wasn't really me. You know what I mean? It was like, I knew I had a greater purpose for my life. I knew there was something else that I should be doing. And, you know, I woke up one morning and I decided, I said, yo, I'm going to give acting everything I got the same way I invest the same energy into all of these negative things just to make money, just to do whatever. I'm going to take all that energy and I'm going to put it into this. And if I take everything I got, and put it into acting the same way I, I got invested mentally just by my environment into this, 
oh, I can't lose. There's no way I can lose. Like I know the end result of this and I've, I've literally danced with it. I've seen a lot of friends die. I've seen friends go to jail. I'm like, boom, I already know how the story ends over here. You know what I mean? I don't know how this story ends. Let me put everything I got into this and see where this story goes. And man, it's been uh, uh, an outstanding 12 years of my life, man. Um, yeah, I was homeless for like the first six years and was happy. Happiest I've ever been in my life because I wasn't looking over my shoulder. I wasn't worried about, oh uh, man, dude, it's like, do the cops know it's in my trunk? Do, you know what I mean? It was just a lot of, it was, a, it, I was relaxed, man. I didn't have the, 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 the TV in the bathroom. I didn't have the, 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 the car in the driveway. I didn't have none of that stuff no more, but I was happy. I was in a two door Pontiac G5, living my greatest life, man. But, it's, it's, but I knew where I was going. And that was, that's all that mattered to me. I knew exactly where I was headed. You know what I mean? So, you know, when you know when you're going and that's where your mind's gotta be, you gotta know where you're headed. And that, I, I feel like that, that changes the game on consistency. You know what I mean? Yeah. Miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Kobe, was that, was that Kobe? Kobe said that? Uh, I think that was Jordan actually said that. Jordan? Okay. But it might be wrong, I don't know. It was somebody in basketball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's dope. That's 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 definitely dope because that that actually was going into my next question about just, um, you know, secrets to success and stuff like that. You know, we tend to have like you know secret recipes. You know, when we cook in, and sometimes we don't want to offer that. You know, for whatever particular reason to people or whatever. You know, but yeah. you said something just about just knowing your purpose. You know, and I I think a lot of us when it comes to anything that we particularly do, sometimes we struggle with just knowing what our particular purpose is. Purpose is. And that kind of delays our growth sometimes because then we don't know whether or not we're going left or right. And you just summed it mm -hmm. up across it, just channeling all this particular energy that you may be using for a particular what have you, whether it's, um, you know, I'm going to use my son, for example. You know, I tell my son sometimes, you know, that same energy you use to play on video games, man, if you, if you put that energy into something that you say you really want to do, like, for example, he wants to play ball. You know, you put that energy towards playing ball, whether it's getting up at, you know, 6 a.m. and go to the gym and practice or go for a run, you'll be a lot more successful because you're putting all that energy and you're not half-assing it. Yeah. You know? um, so I think that's yeah. the, I really salute you on that, man. Especially that journey that you just mentioned that you went through. I really salute you on that because you could have easily quit. Right. <laughs> yeah, nah, I, you know, that's, that is like the easy route, but it's like if you hear... You know what I'm saying? Why not? Why not just go for it, man? We like you don't like one of my mentors, uh, Carl Ford. He's he's one of a very very good acting coach, man, out of New York. Um, he's he's a mentor to me, man. You know, he he broke something down to me. He was like, "Yo, stop putting a burden on your journey." And you know, he was actually he was talking to a class, but like you know, when this dude talks, like you listen, and he was like, "Y'all stop putting a burden on your journey, like." You don't, you don't have to do this. You don't need to do this. You don't want to do, like you get to do this. Like you get to, everybody don't get to, everybody don't get the opportunity to put on their glasses and see what they want. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people are programmed into what they want. You know how many people are doctors right now simply because their dad was a doctor, <laughs> mm -hmm. but they wanted to go be something so much different. And now they are at, at 60 years old, they losing their mind because they like, damn, I didn't want to do this. I didn't get 30 years of my life to this thing. I didn't even want to do it's, it's It's so many people like that, man. He's like, so, you know, you got to be okay with being uncomfortable, man. Uncomfortable is like, it's a beautiful space for me. Like, you know, um, a, a buddy of mine, Patrick Walker, and I, I love name dropping, man, because I got some amazing friends, man. Um, Patrick Walker, he's an actor as well. He asked me one day, he said, man, there's a question I always wanted to ask you. He was like, what was the hardest part of your journey? Because I've been following you. And I said, oh, bro. I said, I'm be honest with you, man. The hardest part of my journey was in the very beginning. It was like the very first month. And I was living in that car and I was trying to like, I was figuring it out. And then one night I was like, it got so cold. Like I was so, I was, I was in Georgia and I'm like, yo, Atlanta ain't supposed to get this cold. And I was in the car freezing and it was like that night in that car and I was like doing my best. I ain't had no heat, car ain't had no heat. And I was sitting there doing my best just to stay as warm as possible. 
And I remember how I just kind of like made my mind mentally tell me that I was warm. And that was when I kind of was like, oh shoot, bro, your brain is, is ridiculously powerful, bro. It's, 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 it's bigger than we even think, yo. And that's when I was really like, that's when I knew I was like, oh, bro, like it's over. I was like, it don't matter how long it takes. I was like, when I show up, they're gonna be like, oh shit. Mm -hmm. So yeah, man, you, you just gotta be ready for the ride, man. It's, it's, it's gonna right. be fun if, if, you, if you can get okay with being uncomfortable. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me take you back to your childhood. You acting now, this is your, this is your profession. What was your favorite show growing up? Man, uh, my favorite shows growing up, man, uh, it's funny. I play a lot of serious roles, but like Martin and the Fresh Prince were like staples in, in growing up, man. Um, but I, I saw a lot of things like one of the one cartoon that I remember growing up that I, I, I actually loved was the MC Hammer cartoon. Man. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Man, MC Hammer's cartoon was, was so dope to me, man. Um, and I mean, there's so many things, man. I mean, like Family Matters, like TJ Friday was a big staple. Um, you know, it was like, uh, God, man, it was a lot of stuff, but films, films is what really grasped me. As a kid growing up, I watched a lot of action films from, um, Charles Bronson movies to, to Jean-Claude Van Damme. Um, yeah, I, I have to say, man, me, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Steven Seagal, we was like homies for like a good minute, man. Like I watched a lot, like A Time to Kill was my favorite movie from like, I think I was maybe like eight years old up to maybe like 12, man. Uh, I absolutely love that film, man. But then, you know, you got Coming to America. You got, you know, The Color Purple. Like, there was so many films that just influenced me um, as a kid growing up, man. Um, and it's funny because uh, I have to say uh, my grandmother, when she let me watch The Color Purple, uh, it was a big shift and she used to always kind of force us to watch it. But I don't know if the other, like my brothers and sisters realized, like I really enjoyed watching the movie. Like I love seeing her transition. I love seeing the switch. Like when she pulled a knife on him, like it's like, yeah. And like, see films like that, let me know. It's like, yo, it don't matter how low you are in the beginning. If you, as long as you are alive, you have an opportunity to change your situation. It might take you some time to realize you need to change it. It might take you some time to find the courage to pull that knife and say, nah, no more. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, as long as you're alive, you have that opportunity, man. And I think that's that's like a beautiful thing. And that's one of the main things that brought me out of my suicide as well, um, knowing that you know, as long as I'm alive, I got an opportunity. So, you know, a lot of films like that really, um, really kind of molded me as an artist, man, as an actor, um, I'd have to say. Malcolm X. And I have to mention this because my son, my son is named after um, Shadow Henderson from Mo Better Blues. Uh, Mo Better Blues made me want to be an actor. When I saw that film, it made me want to be an actor. But I loved um, Wesley Snipes' character more than I loved Denzel. Denzel did a phenomenal job, but Wesley Snipes' character wasn't a yes man. And I loved that he was being honest with everybody. I felt like that was so important. Uh, so yeah, my son, he got the name Shadow Barrington from Shadow Henderson um, uh, from Mo Better Blues. Now, Denzel, loved Denzel, so I was still locked into Denzel. And when I saw Malcolm X, I wanted to be an activist. <laughs> so that's how I, I kind of became um, a little bit of both just throughout my journey, you know what I mean? Um, and being a philanthropist. Tell us some of the, the movies um, and films that you've uh, participated in thus far and um, also who you would love to work with. And also Man. what's upcoming. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, um, I worked on a lot of stuff. Uh, so far, I've, I've, I've had over 50 film, television, and commercial credits uh, over the past 12 years. Um, I started my career out as a... I did a lot of independent films, but my first major television show was The Blacklist on NBC. Um, I was in season two of that, and that's what really kind of opened me up more to the film. Um, I was able to like get on a really big set and really see like all the different parts that was happening. Uh, since then, I've been on Kidding on Showtime with Jim Carrey. Um, I'm on um, 
Uh, I had two two major films on Netflix released last year, All Day and a Night, um, which is Joe Robert Cole, who wrote the Black Panthers film. That was his writing and directorial debut, All Day and a Night on Netflix. Which was um, amazing. Say again? And I said, which was amazing. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, it was, it was a really great film. I'm um, very proud of that film. Um, and then Jezebel, another film I'm hugely proud of. Um, written and directed by Numa Perrier, her writing and directorial debut, um, based on a true story, her story, what I thought, which I, I believe is um, amazing. That is such a courageous thing to be able to tell your story unapologetically. Um, uh, gosh, I have a lot of films on Amazon. I love Amazon because you can just type my name in and it will tell you everything I'm in. Um, but um, Products of the American Ghetto, uh, written and directed by Henderson Maddox, amazing film on um, on Amazon and Tubi, uh, as well as Deficiency Notice, uh, great film, Christmas to Remember, One Last Christmas, all those are on Amazon, <laughs> Amazon Prime. And we just type your name, right? Just gotta type your name on Amazon. Yeah, yeah, you can type my name in, Stephen Barrington, on Amazon, and uh, yeah, everything I'm in should should come up. Um, and uh, upcoming, um, I actually just finished three projects, uh, which I'm super excited about. Um, one is called The Lifted, um, uh, which is a John Singleton project, um, his uh, state project. Uh, I don't know if I can talk too much about that project, so I'm, I'm, I know it's premiering at the Pan African Film Festival. Uh, in this, uh, this upcoming January. So I'm looking forward for that to come out. Um, you know, of course, John Singleton is a big deal. So uh, with his name attached to it, I'm super excited about where this film's gonna go. Um, also, I just wrapped another uh, series pilot for a show called In Living Horror, uh, which I'm super excited about. Um, <clears throat> written and directed by Britt Banks. Um, uh, star myself, Jordan Christie, Rita Brown, and, and Zachariah. It's a, I love how we're taking the narrative back on for ourselves. Uh, Britt Banks, good friend of mine, sister, she's a horror writer. And I love it. You don't see a lot of Black people like pursuing horror as their genre, um, as a director or a writer. And uh, she's making some, some amazing stuff, man. So I'm super excited for y'all to see that. It's called Living Horror. Uh, 2022 it should should be getting released and hopefully uh prayers up it goes to series and then yeah that'll that'll y'all will see me a lot more uh it will. The series um and then the last, the last one i just completed was black butterfly uh black butterflies is based on you know when you think about babies black butterflies um it's based on a lot of different things that um black women especially go through uh with childbirth um that uh, are being like overlooked. So I, I feel like that film is actually gonna be very, very, it's gonna be very important. The script has already won um, a few awards for it, um, but now we were able to bring it to life just last week. So I'm looking forward to seeing that one uh, being released as well in 2022. Uh, oh, people to work with. That was the last question, right? Yeah. Uh, as far as people to work with, um, I'm excited to work with my friends, man. Um, I have a lot of, I have, I have two good male friends who are writers right now, and I cannot wait to bring one of their scripts to life. Um, Mike Guyow, he was a writer on Insecure, an editor. Uh, uh, he also, he did that other show on Netflix, he's gonna kill me, but uh, God, it was Jen and, Jen and something, I can't remember, but it was good. It was a good show on Netflix. Um, and then Daryl Wesley, he's a writer as well right now. He's on the Upshaws and the game. Um, two good, good male friends of mine, man, who are phenomenal writers, uh, and, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to bringing some of their work to life. As far as directors go, Jamar Hill, um, I'm actually going to a premiere for his movie on the run tonight. Um, and I'm looking forward to, to doing some of, some really dope stuff for him this upcoming year as well. Um, there's a slew of people. Uh, I mean, there's big names I, I would love to work with. But at the end of the day, um, I think everything happens in time. I, lo I love to work with my friends because we, we all seem to have the same vision and grind, especially when I know, you know, how hard you've been working to get to where you are. You know what I mean? So 
I really love working with my friends who are who are on the come up right now. Oh, and Gail Bean, let me say this. I have a sister named Gail Bean. She's an actress. She is on almost, she's everything. She is, <laughs> she is, um, she plays the character Wanda on Snowfall. Oh, okay. uh, really good friend of mine, my sister. Uh, man, when I say she is the alley-oop queen, and that's what I mean by, you know, when you, when you know your purpose, just like when you said, Malik, when you know your purpose, um, you're not really worried about giving up the game. It's kind of, it's, it's, it's a little, it's a little different. And I mean, like my homegirl throws me alleys, like she'll call me like, oh, they just sent me this project. There's a character on here, it'd be great for you. Boom, you need to send it to your agent, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you know, like those are the type of people who I, who I want to work with, you know what I mean? And continually, you know, grow, grow amazing relationships with. Um, so yeah. As far as actresses, I, I'd have to say Gail B. As far as male actors, um, honestly, John Travolta, for some reason, uh, I've wanted to work with, with, with John Travolta and, and for a long time, only because, you know, I watched a lot of his interviews and, and I love his process of creating his characters. I love his process. Um, I, think, I think his process is really dope, so... That's one of the, that's somebody who I really love to work with uh, as far as males go. Um, as far as my my peers, man, I, I, I'm ready to play with my peers at any time. It don't matter who it is. You, you we set it up, we get it done. <laughs> Do you find it hard um, as far as you mentioned something about John Travolta and his process of you know, becoming a particular character? Um, do you find it hard to once you engulf yourself in that particular character that you have to um, act in? getting out of that character? I don't. Um, I don't at all, man. Uh, you know, I, I got a group of friends, man, um, who I, I talk to, uh, again, very often. Um, and we talk about this type of stuff, about how, you know, some people can't come back out and how, you know, you could possibly get too in depth. And, you know, I, I, I was explaining, like, I, I was like, I've never experienced that. I mean, I've been in I've done, I've shot films where you're on set so much and so often that you, you do become the person in, 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 to some extent, like you become that person, even when the camera's off and y'all like, everybody's grabbing lunch, you can tend to like have like the same, uh, like nuances or even responses, uh, that your character would have, um, in certain instances. But one thing I always say, like when somebody says, oh, they went too deep, I don't think that they went too deep. I think that they were breathing more into who they truly were. And when it becomes who you truly are or who you truly want to be, because that's another thing, like um, some people want to be something, you know what I mean? There's, there's people who, there's people who become cops because they were bullied. You know what I mean? As a child, you know, that, and, and, that's not exactly who they may want to be, but they may feel safer as that person, if that makes sense. So um, I, I, I truly believe it all depends on the per person and, and just their total mental state, honestly. Um, you know, I come into each character, I approach each, each character as a child. I never approach any character as an adult. I literally go into every role, whether it be a murderer or, a, or an expecting father, I go into every role as a five-year-old kid because I want to have fun with it. A five-year-old kid, he don't care. Mm -hmm. A five-year-old kid might walk up to a gunman coming down the street and say, hey, where you going? You know what I mean? Like a five-year-old kid doesn't have any fear. It doesn't necessarily know fear yet. And that's why I like to uh, really operate from from that childlike state um, because it just it just gives you more it gives me more imagination on where my character can go. So Steve, um, we have to wrap it up. I, I want to tell you that I'm so proud of you, and um, I look forward to seeing um, upcoming projects. You know, I love you to death, and I'm glad that you joined us today <laughs> on the keys to success. Thank you for having me, man. I, I was happy to see you hit me up, and I'll, I'll be glad to come on whenever, y'all. Just let me know. You know, I love you. <laughs> hey, Steve, if anybody from our viewers want to be able to follow you, follow you like on Instagram or what have you, how would they do that? Well, I'm going to shout out Twinkie Bird for this. Twinkie Bird, 
she she taught me to make it easy. You can find me at Stephen Barrington. Whatever you type my name in, you will find everything on me. So at Stephen S T E P H E N Barrington B A R R I N G T O N. So so so. All right, man. I, I, I'm mad tomorrow. You had to end this because I wanted to ask some one more question. Like if if somebody was interviewing to be an actor, what would be one of the questions? I want to I want to act. I want to get in. I want to get in the world. <laughs> oh, I'm not doing it at all. But um, oh, they all they got. All you got to do is DM me right now while I got the time. Because once I ain't got the time, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the viewers hear that. So DM Stephen Barrington on Instagram. Google him. Look, search his name up. Look at his projects. He's all over Netflix, Amazon, and he'll be waiting to hear from you. <laughs> Voices of New Yorkers, we want to thank, thank you again for joining us. Thanks, Stephen, as well as his young King Shadow Malik for joining us as well. Peace, we love y'all guys. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you. Thank you. All right. You turn the recorder off.